Well, I'm back. Thank you so much for joining me. I know I've been away for the last like week and a half, but it was because I was moving um, and rebuilding a studio. So I am here now. Thank you so much for being patient. Now let's get to it. People are now trying to rewrite, rewrite history as if the reason for vaccine mandates and the demonization of the unvaccinated was because we simply didn't know any better, but now we do. Pierce Morgan, one of the most outspoken advocates for denying the unvaccinated rights and even medical care, is a perfect example of what's now happening. Now, before we listen to how his tune has changed lately, let's take a look at some of his previous statements. Those who refuse to be vaccinated with no medical reason not to should be refused NHS care if they then catch COVID. I'm hearing of anti-vaxxers using, using up ICU beds in London at vast expense to the taxpayer. Let them pay for their own stupidity and selfishness. Uh, here's another one. So the unvaccinated may prompt enough new COVID cases slash hospitalization slash deaths to necessitate new restrictions, including lockdowns, and those who will then scream loudest about this infringement of their liberty are the unvaccinated. So he goes on and on like this for months, calling for medical care to be ripped away from the unvaccinated, including from unvaccinated soccer players who were injured during games. But that's all in the past. Here's Pierce Morgan now. So it seemed to me, uh, Neil, that I, when this was all happening, the pandemic, I took quite firm views throughout it, like a lot of people, I guess. Um, one of which was when it was believed, when the vaccines first came along, that they would stop transmission. It seemed to me if you refuse to be vaccinated, you shouldn't be entitled to the same rights to, you know, to go to nightclubs and stuff as those who'd taken the vaccine and were therefore not able to transmit it. However, when it was established that vaccines actually didn't stop transmission, they just stopped a lot of people getting very sick and dying, the argument to then suppress any liberties or freedoms of the unvaccinated, to me, it went away. Because in that instance, if the, if the ability to pass it on is pretty well the same whether you've been jabbed or not, then really it's down to the individual if they want to protect themselves from, from this virus. Uh, so I changed my mind. I got pilloried when I said my original statement. I got pilloried when I changed my mind. I got pilloried, like everybody in this <laughs> pandemic, about all of it. And yet, to me, it seemed perfectly logical, honestly, to, to just change my mind because facts change. Oh, right, OK, because facts change. Well, actually, let's just go back and look at his tweets real quick. So this one was July 27th of 2021. Uh, this one was November 15th of 2021. You know, he went on like this up until recently talking about the unvaccinated. Now, you might think that the change in tune is reasonable, that in the beginning, we genuinely thought the vaccine stopped the spread, but as new variants took hold, the vaccine became less effective. It is what it is. But that's not the case, and many of us knew this. The studies done on the vaccines prior to being rolled out to the general public were never tested for effectiveness against transmission only against severe disease. Dan heb ik de volgende vraag waar ik een duidelijk antwoord op wil. And I will speak in English so there are no misunderstandings. Was the Pfizer COVID vaccine tested on stopping the transmission of the virus before it entered the market? If not, please say it clearly. If yes, are you willing to share the data with this committee? And I really want a straight answer, yes or no, and I'm looking forward to it. Thank you very much. Um, regarding the question around, um, did we know about stopping immunisation before um, it's entered the market? No. Uh, these, um, you know, we had to really move at the speed of science to really understand what is taking place in the market. All right, OK. Uh, we just, you know, had to just uh, move at the speed of science is what they said. So they were never designed against transmission. The scientists themselves never made the claims that this is what the vaccines did. It was politicians, mainstream media, pundits and friends and family members who just heard the word vaccine and made the immediate, immediate assumption that they stopped the spread of the virus. And when many of us pointed out that they were never tested for this, we were told to shut up and take our shots, that we were responsible for grandma catching COVID and possibly dying. Well, in reality, these shots never should have been called vaccines in the first place. They were therapeutics that could help some people have a less severe form of COVID only. And it gets worse. It wasn't just that politicians and media pundits didn't read the actual release studies to understand that the vaccines did not stop the spread. 
There were real world reports coming out of Israel as early as June of 2021 that made it clear the vaccines were not preventing transmission. Israel was the first nation to get the vaccines and they implemented a mass vaccination campaign within a matter of a few weeks. Israel had vaccinated the vast majority of their population just when the U.S. was giving it out to first responders only. But by June of 2021, when the U.S. had only vaccinated about half of the population and more importantly, hadn't really begun requiring vaccine mandates, Israel was scrambling to divvy out boosters to its population because the initial two-dose vaccines had not stopped the spread. They were in the middle of a crazy surge larger than before it had ever had seen prior to it having vaccines at all. Now, waning immunity after the BNT, uh, this is, the, this is a, a study here called waning immunity after the Pfizer vaccine in Israel, and you can see this here. It says in uh, December of 2020, Israel began a mass vaccination campaign against coronavirus disease 2019 by administering the Pfizer vaccine, which led to a sharp curtailing of the outbreak. After a period with almost no cases of severe acute respiratory syndrome coronavirus 2, SARS-CoV-2 infection, a resurgent COVID-19 outbreak began in mid-June 2021. Possible reasons for the resurgence were reduced vaccine effectiveness against the Delta variant and waning immunity. The extent of waning immunity of the vaccine against the Delta variant in Israel is unclear. So there it is. During an FDA meeting in the summer of 2021, uh, Israeli officials from their Ministry of Health were invited to present what was going on in Israel and what they were learning in real time. And they were asked why the vaccines had not stopped the spread. And the FDA officials really wanted to know also was why the vaccines had not prevented death. Because in Israel, not only were they dealing with a massive surge of cases, regardless of vaccination status, but they were also seeing an increase in vaccinated patients entering the hospital and even dying. And as a reminder, Israel used Pfizer exclusively. FDA officials wanted to know if the vaccine had worn off or if Delta had rendered the vaccines ineffective. And the Israelis' answer was both. They said the vaccines not only wore off against the Alpha variant, but that against the Delta variant, they wore off faster. Now, in this country, the narrative has been that Omicron was the reason for the vaccines not stopping the spread, but the data simply doesn't support that conclusion. We know from Israel that the vaccines were not effective at stopping the spread against any variant. We also know that they, wore, that they wear off against any variant, and people who have been double, triple, or even quadruple vaccinated can still get a severe case of COVID when their vaccines wear off. Nonetheless, despite the trials never testing for spread, despite the Israelis providing ample evidence that the vaccines don't stop the spread, in the late summer and fall of 2021, vaccine mandates came rolling through the pipelines anyway. We had all the data we knew, yet media pundits and politicians ignored the data and embraced the largest government-sanctioned discrimination campaign against a group of people in my lifetime. And still to this day, Unvaccinated foreigners cannot enter this country. So, you know, people like Piers Morgan can attempt to rewrite history all they want, but the reality is there is no excuse for their behavior. They knew what they were doing. Thank you so much for joining me. Please be sure to like, share, and subscribe so you never miss an episode. And I will be doing regular segments again because I am back. Um, even though I'm not fully moved in yet, the studio is not fully complete. There is a bit of an echo in the room, but I am still working uh, now and, and trying my best to, to get things going forward. So I do appreciate your patience. Thank you so much for being here and I will see you next time.